Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Budgeting Biologist. My name is Brittany. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping on my little old video. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I do videos on cash stuffing, budgeting, and finance on my channel. So if you're interested in any of that type of content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the rest of the video. So for today, I will be doing my December budget with me, and I cannot believe that December is almost here. I'm not ready for Christmas at all, but it is what it is. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. So for today, I will be doing a zero-based budget. I haven't done a zero-based budget on my channel yet. And if you don't know what a zero-based budget is, that basically means every dollar and every cent that you are budgeting has a place, has a job, and your total from the end of the budget should be zero dollars. So let's go ahead and get started. So whenever I budget, I like to start off with my incomes first. I have two jobs, my main job and then kind of my side gig. And in both of those positions, I am a salaried employee. So my income does not change month to month. So for my main job, I get paid $6,258. And from my side job, I get paid $280. So I'm gonna go ahead and add up how much I have for income this month. So in total for income this month, this like I said, this number generally doesn't change. I have $6,538 that I can work with for this month. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is my taxes. So while my taxes are automatically deducted from my side income, they're not automatically deducted from my main income. I have to pay what's known as estimated quarterly taxes. And for this paycheck, I owe $250 for my federal taxes and $158 for my state taxes. And um, the values are kind of low. And that's because earlier this year, I overpaid in taxes. So the amount I owe for the final quarter of the year isn't that much. So let's see how much I owe in total for taxes, which is $408. Next is buffer and buffer is just the amount of money that I leave in my checking account, just in case any of my budgeting was wrong or if any type of emergency happens. And for this month, I will be leaving $300 in my buffer. Next is savings, and savings encompasses two different categories. First is my personal savings, and then second is the house fund, which is money me and my boyfriend are setting aside for a future down payment on a home. And for this month, savings is going to be getting $2,000, which is pretty cool. Almost a third of my total income will be going to savings in some format. That's pretty cool. $1,000 to my personal savings account, and then $1,000 to my house fund. So really excited to be able to put that much money aside for savings this month. So in total for that, I have $2,300 for buffer and savings. So now what I'm going to do is subtract the amount I need to set, up, set aside for taxes and the amount I need to set aside for my buffer and savings. And that leaves me with $3,830 that I had to distribute amongst my fixed expenses, variable expenses, investments, and sinking funds. All right, so first thing is we're gonna start with our fixed expenses. And as you can guess, these generally do not change from month to month. So first is rent and parking, and I owe $1,403 for my rent and parking. And that includes all of my utilities as well. For internet, I need to set aside $55.89. My cell phone bill recently went down. I went from paying $43.80 to $37.70 now for my cell phone. I got a discount that I didn't even realize that I was eligible for. So below a $40 cell phone bill is fantastic. 
Apple, which for me is Apple Music Student. I still have my Apple Music Student and my iCloud storage and that together totals $6.28. And then retirement, I'm putting aside $750 because I am trying to max out my traditional IRA by the end of the year. I already have $3,000 in a Roth IRA account and I wanna put $3,000 in a traditional IRA account. And the max that you can contribute per year is $6,000, so I'm almost there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add up my fixed expenses and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So in total for my fixed expenses, I need to set aside $2,252.87. All right, so now I'm moving on to my variable expenses, which can change month to month to month. Household will be getting its usual $15. Eating out, I'm gonna leave at 75. Gas, um, I was playing around adding more money to gas, but I just don't drive that much, even with these like, you know, higher gas prices that are, you know, out right now. I still don't drive enough to make it worth it to put another $10 in the account. I'm sorry, in the in the envelope. Um, the gas station nearest to me, I think was at six, not six, 349 this morning, which isn't that bad. So I still think I can manage to only get by basically off a tank of gas for the month. And if you're new to the channel, the way I'm able to do that is because I take public transportation to get to work and the institution that I work for actually pays our public transportation cost. And, you know, that dramatically reduces the amount of money that I need to spend on gas every month. Next is beauty and beauty is going to be getting $60. Alcohol, which is a category that I have not given money to in a long time, um, will be getting $25. And that's basically to, you know, pay for a bottle of wine or a pack of beer, you know, if we go to um, some event during this holiday season. Laundry will be getting $20. Groceries will be staying at $175. I keep telling you guys, if you can shop at Aldi's, um, it's one of the only grocery stores I've been to that their prices really have not changed, at least in my area, their prices generally have not changed over the last few months. And I'm able to, you know, get a good amount of groceries each month for $175. Now granted, I do only have to feed myself, but 175 has been working out really well for me, um, primarily shopping at all these. Personal will be getting $100. Date night will be getting $70. Spending will be getting its usual $40. And I'm gonna try not to blow through all that in a week like I did in the month of November. Giving will be getting $10. And then Nutrafol, which are the hair vitamins that I take, will be getting $79.99. Um, I put this in variable expenses because even though the price of the vitamins is $79.99, I pretty much find a coupon every month, a different coupon every month for it that takes off some of the value, but I'm just gonna go ahead and budget the highest amount um, that I can for those vitamins, just in case I don't find a coupon. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add up my variable expenses and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So in total for my variable expenses, I need to put it, put aside $6,999.99 for my variable expenses for the month of December. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add up my fixed expenses. So in total for my expenses, I need to set aside $2,952.86. All 
So now all we need to do is figure out how much money we have left over after our expenses. So in total, we have $877.14 that we can distribute amongst our sinking funds and investments. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our sinking funds. The first category is Christmas and Christmas will be getting $20. Um, the last time I stuffed this envelope, I had $280 and the gold total was 300. Now I did go ahead and spend some of that money already, but to make it to the $300 total, I just need to add 20 more dollars and then Christmas is done for the year. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract the amount that I'm putting in each one of my envelopes as we go along um, from what I had left over after setting aside money for my expenses. Gifts will be getting $50. Car maintenance will be getting $10. Clothes will be getting $25. Brittany, which is my own personal sinking fund, just for something I wanna buy that's not in any of the categories listed, will be getting $100. Car insurance will be getting its $74, which is going towards paying um, my six month premium. Electronics will be getting $130. So I have to start that over. I messed up on my calculation. Give me a second and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So after taking out my money for electronics, I have $468.14. So let's keep going. Vacation will be getting $120. Future will be getting $100. And then medical will be getting $40. So that leaves me with $208.14 left over. And then let me just add up how much money I'm actually putting in my sinking funds and I'll be right back. So in total for my sinking funds, I'm setting aside $669. And like I said, I have $208.14 left over for investment. So the only thing I'm going to be investing in this month will be my Robinhood account. And I'm gonna be putting the entire $208.14 in my Robinhood account. And in general, I haven't really talked about investing on this channel, but I primarily buy ETFs and mutual funds on Robinhood. And I do own a few individual stocks as well. But if you wanna get into investing, I highly recommend starting off with ETFs and mutual funds. And with that, that leaves me left over with $0 in my budget completing my zero-based budget. So every single dollar and every single cent has a place and I know exactly where the money is going, which is really good for me and is going to help control my spending. Um, November was a very expensive month for your girl. So, um, you know, I'm really hoping to get my spending back under control in the month of December. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Um, if you celebrated Thanksgiving here in the US or abroad this past week, I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving and a really good start to the holiday season here. And you know, a great rest of your weekend. So if you enjoyed this, remember, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.